Hello and welcome! I am No Coffee, No Life. As you can tell, we are once again in the mire. This is the final build for October, and it's kind of an interesting one. It has a lot of potential, it has a lot of clear open space, but it's not at level. And it has very few neighbors. Its only neighbors are Abby's Bunker and the Gnarled Shadows, both to the southwest. Let's take a look at this place. It's a cabin, not damaged at all, except for the floor in one spot, but really not a crisis. Uh, it's in good shape for the most part. I showed up here and there were these two Brotherhood initiates. They didn't last long. There are other mobs that show up here, but they're nothing to worry about. It's got this yellow truck, but it's a cool spot. So let's get to building, shall we? To build onto this cabin in the back, you will need to be about the width of one of the posts here at the corner away from the back of the cabin. If you're not this far away, when you go to place walls on the first floor right up against the cabin, or when you go to do that on the second floor, if you build a second floor, you will not be able to place walls because it's going to conflict with the back half of this cabin. The footprint for this camp build is going to be six by two for the main portion and then an additional foundation piece is going to be added. You can clip two of your foundation pieces into the base of the cabin on this side and then place an additional three on the left side. That's the set of six foundations and then I'm going to place a final foundation over here to serve as a porch in the back connected to that foundation at the other corner of the cabin. Now I'm going to be able to place all my walls down on the exterior. I won't be able to place walls on the side of the cabin that has pieces clipped underneath the cabin. The roof is going to conflict and I'm fine with that. I'm still going to be able to close it off with a roof, but for the rest of the cabin I'm going to close off with walls. I'm placing this stair here, then placing the second floor walls up top. Once I'm done placing these walls, I'm going to place these two roof pieces. I have to place an angled piece first, otherwise I won't be able to place any roof here. If I try to place a flat roof, it's going to say item conflicts. Here's what we have so far for the build. So we're going to switch these to flat roofs, and because this haunted house roof has the same exact shingling as the cabin it's going to blend perfectly i've placed this one in the wrong direction so that the shingles aren't matching with the rest of the cabin but i'm going to change that here in a minute as soon as i finish placing that one i'm going to flip this back to an angled roof then adjust it so that the shingles will be going in the proper direction so that they match with the rest of the shingles on this cabin now we're going to place our second floor foundation finish off this floor of the cabin and we're going to place our walls and we're done with this section. Now we're gonna place a wall here. Of course, something is conflicting because we can't have anything easy in this game. I had to take apart part of what I'd already built to finally put this wall in. And of course it was, you know, the second floor foundation that was causing me issues. So I'm placing all the walls back up. And once I'm done with that, I'll be able to finish closing off this entire space. So now that that's taken care of, let's take a look at what we have. We've got our front porch, the second floor, the first floor walled off, and our back porch. Now we're gonna slap on some stairs and complete the roof. It's just up to personal preference how you're gonna do your roof. I am keeping the same kind of shape as the cabin's roof with two arches on either side and then a rectangular piece in the center. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to be slanting in the back. It's nothing out of the ordinary. You might choose something different. That's just what I'm doing. I'm going to finish closing off the porch in the back, put its roof on, and that's where we are right now for the build. That's how it looks. It's not going to change much that portion that we've already done. We're going to add two foundations back here for the other half of this build, which is going to be a maze that I'm placing on the side. Now I'm not gonna show you all of the maze because I want you to be surprised at the end of this video, but I am gonna show you this back portion, which is the end of the maze, because it's an add-on to this building, and I can't lower the foundations any lower than this. This is about the level that they're gonna be because of the slant. So I'm placing two concrete foundations back here, and once they're in place, 
I'll be closing off that area. Now for a good portion of the time you work in the mire it's dark and in this case, in this back corner, I'm gonna need to turn the light on to make sure we're even, Steven, and we are. This is perfectly aligned right up against this wall, and I should have no problems putting the walls up for this section now. Just to add some variation to my roof line, I'm gonna add two junk fences on the back end of this building this extension I should say just so that it's not all at one line it's raised a little bit higher than the porch roof and the roof that's gonna go behind it once I put up the walls now all we have to do is put these two angled roof pieces close off that gap by putting an angled wall put in a stair slap a gate here and we've finished this area now we're gonna put some fencing up on the second floor for a balcony area. Now, this is pretty neat. You can actually make a fancier entrance to this cabin. You just have to play around a bit with these porch pieces. I'm gonna snap this one here and then I'm going to adjust it because I don't want the porch piece that I'm going to leave in front of the cabin sticking inside the cabin. I want it to be lined up and look like a proper entrance. See, it's still too far in. I'm gonna move it out a little more and make sure it's lined up correctly so that it's not off kilter when I place the, the final and once it gets placed, it's gonna look awesome. I'm gonna take this other one out and it, see? Look, that sign is there, the stairs are there. It looks like it, it should be there. It's part of the cabin because it's the wood is silvered enough that it looks like the cabin. And there we have the current build. And this is the general shape of the cabin and its extension. It's not going to really change at this point anymore. It's, it's, it's how it's going to be. I'm going to place a stair here and I'm going to actually switch those out to the standard fences because they fit better out front. It's just They just look better with the cabin because it's the same tone of wood. It's that silvered, weathered wood. It, it's not shiny or new or painted and then kind of stripped by the elements. It looks the same. So we're going to use them. It just takes a little bit of finessing to get them placed nicely on either side and I'm going to close this front end with a gate. I just have a few more things to do on the left side of the cabin, fixing this porch and double walling the upper level. And there it is. It's 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 done and we can move on to the maze or at least the front of the maze so that you can see how I start it because if you're gonna make your own maze, it's another example of personal choice. You're gonna build it the way you want to. I used corn to get a general idea as to where I wanted to place things in my maze. I'm gonna say that while I used corn, you should know if you don't know already, it takes up a lot of budget. It works wonderfully if you want to create a, a line of stuff that you can pass through and you can put things up against so that you can make a basic shape, but I wouldn't advise you leaving a lot of this stuff in your build because it will take up a lot of your budget. You can see it going up a lot on my screen. And I took out a bunch of the corn that I used. I did keep some in the maze, but you can use this really well to get an idea of how you want to set up the basic shape and paths inside your maze. We're going to quickly slap down the border of my maze just so that it's there and I don't have to worry about it. It's going to be some fences and hay bales, nothing out of the ordinary. And as soon as I get this border defined, I'm going to work on the front of the maze, which is the section we're going to go over. You can see that that exterior wall is built. I'm going to use some hay bales to round the corner because it's pretty easy to use them as a way to get that corner to curve out towards the front of the house uh, without too much issue. The, the fences are a little tricky that way. So if you have something that's just as bulky as the hay bales, this is a good place for it. So I'm going to complete that curve with some fencing. And I'm gonna make the interior wall that you see right before you enter the maze. The slope this cabin is on is at a great angle 
for a maze that you don't want people seeing further into it and you don't immediately have an idea when you're looking at the front of the maze as to where it might be going because of that slope that every subsequent wall behind the wall that you're looking at is up higher and it's preventing you from seeing further into the maze unless you go inside and then the walls are obviously going to appear much higher than you. This is, of course, if we're not using marsupial, because if you're using marsupial, then you can probably jump to the end of the maze. I mean, I would hope that anybody going through the maze wouldn't be jumping, because what's the point of having some fun and building a maze if you're just gonna have people skip to the end? Finally, for those of you curious about the interior of the cabin, you will need to put something down that reaches the floor underneath the cabin, or you'll have to place one of those mats, the dirty bath mats, in order to place anything within this cabin. It won't blueprint. You just have to make sure that something's connecting to the ground underneath or registering that it's connecting to the ground in order to place anything in this cabin. And that's basically what I had to do here with these coffins. That's the only way I was able to place them. Here's the final cabin and its accompanying maze. It is actually pretty full of stuff. I was a little concerned budget-wise, but it, uh, it worked out in the end. I have a ton of stuff in here. It looks great. It's very immersive. It looks like it belongs here in a strange sort of way, and I couldn't be happier with it being the last Halloween build for the month of October. It's kind of like the icing on the cake. So. Now that we're here and it's all done, let's go ahead and take a look inside, shall we? We're gonna start with the interior of the cabin. Now, when you first arrive here, it's already populated with a lot of items, um, junk and items that are just living in here. So you don't have to do too much to fill it up. I mean, it's already considerably filled up. It's got a bike in here and a bumble bear and a bird cage. And I've put this fireplace and I've put a vendor area. It already has a bed in here. I've run some lights, done some decorating on the walls, but it doesn't really take much. And it because it's super problematic to put things in here, it doesn't make it easy to put anything in. When you do get it in, it, it does look great. And I've put some sconces out near the front door and I have this lovely well that I've placed right up front and it makes some great spooky sounds when you activate it. And I'm a sucker for Halloween stuff, so I was going to get it anyways. I don't think you necessarily need to get everything that they're offering in the shop, so I think it was kind of a crummy thing that they did with the last set. And frankly, I would just wait till next year when they go to put it on sale. I've got a bunch of the pumpkins that we've earned from the spooky scorched set up in here, and I've placed a death claw inside this Nuka Cola diorama. I don't have it on because I don't want to hear the train. We're gonna enter into this back area and I've got a cluttered up shelf and a seating area and I've lit up the Flatwoods Encounter sign by putting it on top of an already pre-lit sign. I've got my generators behind the stair coming up to this landing and I've decorated it pretty simply, but it still looks nice. And I'm using again that Guild of Antiquities set stair. Onward to the small room for the resident of this cabin. It's tiny and it's well appointed with a bed of nails. And we've got a little crocolisk underneath the bed and a sloth above it. Let's open the door and you'll see the little deck we have out here. It's just some seating. I'm gonna close this off again and we can go downstairs to see the rest of what's on offer here. And by what's on offer, I mean the maze. You finally get to get see the inside of this maze. Let's close the door and you can see, I put a candle in one of the pumpkins. It is possible. It's just some of them are a little easier than others to merge a candle into. So when you go to do it, you'll understand it might be a little more frustrating than you expected. My maze rules, no jumping and have fun, obviously. So we're gonna go in. I've got a scarecrow, some jack-o'-lanterns, 
Oh my, corn, trees. Oh look, there's a pumpkin stand. There's a lot of stuff out here. And oh, look, our first little diorama, a graveyard with a Mothman effigy, some more corn, and oh, look, it's Earl. He's come to pay a visit. I'm gonna look over here. I hear ravens, my goodness. Oh, oh, look, some other people peeping in. And oh, hey, oh, it's a, another, another graveyard. There's a warning sign and some, some busts and another jack-o'-lantern. That's, that's cheerful. Isn't it? And, uh, oh, like another graveyard. Well, and, uh, what's, let's see, what's in this light? Oh, hey, it's a scorch paste. <laughs> We're gonna pass by our lovely fortune wizard and get a, get some fortune from him. And move along. And, oh, hey, is, is this the exit? I wonder. <laughs> let's check it out. Oh, no, no, no exit here. Back out. And, oh. Look, wait a minute. I think I missed something. Let's look. Uh, oh, look, another, another uh, visitor trapped in the maze. Let's go on. And, oh, look, I think maybe we have reached the end of this maze. Open it up. And, oh. This is very, very spooky. Oh, pumpkins and a sweet treat for your completion of the maze. Who doesn't like getting candy for Halloween? So, oh, oh no, I got closed in. Closed the, the gate and uh, how do I get out? How do I get out? Oh, probably through here. And that's it, that's the maze in its entirety. I know, it's hokey. It's not very scary, but it is a maze and it is Halloween themed. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I had fun making this build and I hope you enjoyed watching it and coming along with me as we traveled through the maze and reached its spooky end. For everybody who's joined, thank you very much. I, I'm happy to show people things that maybe they didn't know for building or inspire people when they're building to do things differently or to, you know, maybe come up with their own ideas because of things that they saw. So thanks for coming along with me. If you like what you see here, then click on that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're aware when new videos release. You're not gonna see another video from me again until November, but until next time, have a happy Halloween, have a wonderful Dia de los Muertos, and above all, happy building in the wasteland.